Welcome back to the uh, Football Out West show. It is episode 47, our third season, Craig, our third season, um, only our second season back. But can you believe it? Jeez, it's um, it's been amazing, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. 47, uh, almost the big 50. Um, we've said it before and we'll say it again. We actually only started, we were only going to do three shows. Um, and here we are, we're almost at the half century top. So you don't, uh, you don't look any different from the day we started. Yeah, no, fantastic, mate. Uh, enough about us, and let's talk about our very, very special guest. He's um, he's been itching, he's been sweating, he's been really, really just chafing at the bit to come on this show, and um, you know, um, he's finally on the show, and with um, great pleasure, um, let's welcome the head of the newly appointed um, position of head of futsal, um, Anthony Groomer from from Football Victoria. Anthony, how are you? Nice to see your smiling face. Good. Thank you, Tonchi and Craig, and congratulations on the show. Three seasons already. That's fantastic. Oh, I know. Jeez, it's almost time for kindergarten, Craig. What do you reckon, huh? <laughs> uh, very good. No, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to get you on uh, on the show, Anthony, and uh, looking forward to the uh, the chat about your new role and, and how futsal's, uh, how it's going to impact uh, futsal and the, and the game here in Victoria. Thanks for the invite. No problem. Now, early in the show, Anthony, we did mention about um, football people being involved in football organisations and the importance of that. Now, mate, um, knowing you personally, both from, from, from a few years back as well, and a lot of people do as well, um, if there was one person in Victoria, I think, that had to head up um, the head of futsal, it's, it's, it's Anthony Grimmer. Mate, you've had a long um, and direct connection with the sport. Um, tell us a bit about your background and, and how you got involved with futsal um, um, over to you, mate. We want to hear all about it. Yeah, well, I was basically born into a, a futsal family, if you like. Um, originally from Adelaide, um, my dad in particular, Ray, um, does a lot of volunteering, has worked in football pretty much his whole life as well. Uh, you think he's full-time with the way he, he gives his, uh, his life to, to futsal and football as well. But it's just one of those things where, you know, you, you start off, as a as a five or six year old, you tag along, and then it and it and and you just get that futsal or football bug, and that's what happened to me. And and uh, strangely enough, with futsal, um, in, my dad was a referee for some time, and and I chose to to take the referee pathway at a very very early age. Um, and and uh, one day he was refereeing a, a senior men's match in a in a local uh, town in Adelaide, and uh, the other referee never showed up, so he was stuck doing a grand final. Uh, with you know only himself to to referee this senior men's match and and because I tagged along all those all those years uh, he asked me to to referee on the other side and and yeah. uh, just point point my hands in in either direction and and, <laughs> them there. and, and that's how it started really and um, yeah. funny story was uh, I was I was I think maybe twelve or thirteen at the time uh, doing a senior men's match with my dad. And uh, I did such a good job, apparently, that the uh, there was a spare trophy left uh, for the champions team at the end of the night, which they gave to me. So uh, I'll, I'll never remember, I'll never forget that moment. It's one of those things where you look back and um, to, say, to say from that moment and now sort of heading up the game in um, in Victoria, it, it, it sort of you know hits you. Um, you know, it, it, everything that I do is is from the heart and, and from my um, I guess personal experience in the game. Yeah, perfect. So just um, before we sort of get on to your role and, and, and everything else, Anthony, but just for those that don't know or are not familiar with, with futsal, um, I'm sure most people are that listen to the show, but there will be some people out there that, that, that don't know. What's the key differences between uh, futsal and a, and, a, and a genuine, you know, normal five-a-side, indoor five-a-side tournament or comp yeah. Uh, game? Yeah, well, futsal is the, the official um, FIFA five-a-side five uh, or well, the official approved version um, of five side and uh, futsal meaning uh, foot is obviously football and sala is the um, Uruguayan word for or the Spanish word for um, hall so that's how it came you know futsal uh, was was how the name came about um, but um, it, it actually originated after the the first World Cup when Uruguay hosted it and there were, I think it was a PE teacher who who decided to take all the kids uh, after training indoors after it was it was raining so heavily and uh, he wanted to. I think I think basketball was a key sport for them as well. But he wanted to really um, mimic the the football uh, pitch indoors. So you know, drawing the line markings, uh, yeah. but found that in a very short contained area, it'd be better to sort of uh, like in futsal instead of throwing the ball in, in in back into the to the pitch, if you like, it's you actually put the ball on the spot 
on the line and you kick it in. So mm -hmm. it's it's five v five, but um, and, and it's very technical. Indoor soccer is is um, if mostly played off rebound walls uh, and nets. So futsal is a very technical game. It's got its own laws of the game under FIFA. It's got its own FIFA Futsal World Cup. Um, and yeah, it's just it's it's a global game. Again, played pretty much wherever football's played. Yeah, Anthony, yeah. most sorry, uh, Craig. Got it. Right. No, I was just going to say, um, yes, there's a couple of obviously difference. The ball's slightly different, isn't it? The, uh, the mm. ball's slightly, it's a, it's a heavier ball, so you don't get it is. It, it's low rebound, so um, yeah. it, 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 it takes a, a lot of uh, skill and, and it improves a lot of ball control uh, for players. Um, you know, in terms of footballers who play futsal, you know, they, they can get, you know, a lot of touches on the ball. They can make, you know, quick decisions in, in very uh, short space. So the technical skill needed to to get out of those small spaces and, and use that ball, uh, you know, you see a lot of the Brazilians and Ronaldinho and 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 those, you know, even Tom Rogic uh, played for the Futsaroos yeah. and they met the, the Australian national team. You see their skill level and the way they have real real close ball control. So that ball is a is a key factor in that game. Now, Anthony, um, a lot of um, these days you sort of uh, see futsal leagues and what you're not, and they often play on um, just traditional basketball courts and, and they use those dimensions. But the actual official um, futsal court, internationally speaking, is yeah. a lot bigger than that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's a 40 metre by 20 metre court, mm -hmm. and your average basketball court could be, you know, even smaller, but, you know, yeah. smaller. It's around 36 uh, by 18, even smaller at times, even 30 metres. So, um, it ranges, but I think that comes down to our infrastructure as well across uh, this country yeah. where, you know, most of the venues are set up as multi-purpose. Um, so it, it suits us to to be able to, uh, and also councils and, and providers to be able to, um, you know, even like Paul de Blasi who had before, you're able to cater for a range of sports, not just futsal um, and indoor soccer. So um, the good thing for us is, you know, trying to, um, roll out a strategy like we're doing here in Victoria and even nationally is that we, we really want to be, um, you know, rolling out futsal wherever there's a basketball or netball court, to be honest. Um, what And that brings me to the next question, I guess. What can the sport as a whole, I suppose, expect from this new, um, 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 what's the best word to describe it, um, FFE now embracing in futsal um, as far as pathways, as far as elite development, even things as far as um, getting, I guess, the different associations and, dare I say, factions, for, for want of a better word, um, under the one umbrella. What's, 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 what's your vision for, for, for this new movement, if you like? Well, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because when, when we looked at this space, we, we did a review in 2019, uh, an independent review on futsal, and uh, a lot of the recommendations and, and you know, we couldn't roll out um, last year due to COVID. Um, the organisation uh, implemented a, a strategic plan for football generally called Football Football Ways. And that strategic plan uh, basically catered for, you know, football for all, anywhere, anytime and any format. You know, you, we're starting to see a lot, lot of five-a-side and seven-a-side initiatives from our organisation um, because, you know, it's more than just 11-a-side. There's, there's around 450,000 players who play football all year round and about 72,000 players play uh, football just in the winter. So we have to cater for, you know, football all year round. And, and we know we know historically in the off-season, the football off-season, uh, futsal in indoor soccer has been primarily played, and that's where it's most popular in that, in that, in that um, time of the year. So from the recommendations in 2019, um, and then from my own extensive consultation post-COVID as well, um, it's really... Um, you know, really unfortunate um, the impact that COVID has had on the, the leisure industry or the futsal yep. industry as well, indoor sports um, being locked up for so long, um, that we really need to, to first of all, uh, just show our support and be genuine in, um, you know, I wanted to go in there with personally uh, a narrative that, that was genuine and uh, that could really regain the trust and credibility of the futsal community. And I think, first of all, that's just to unify the sport. We needed to, like you said, there's a, it's a lot of fractions out there. And that's because um, over the last decade, last decade or so, there's been, you know, change, there's been a lot of change. There's been a lot of, um, I guess, different direction and, and from, from management in, in different organisations about how they govern football and, and where it sits in the, in the football economy. Um, so 
first of all, I just wanted to get them together and, and unify them. And um, how do we also recognize the sport of futsal and, and its place in, in our economy? So the fact now that we've got that formally recognized as part of our strategic plan um, and, and we really want to facilitate its growth uh, amongst schools, uh, we want to see the increase in development of players um, and coaches and, and referees and futsal clubs and futsal centers throughout uh, Victoria. So that's the first really um, item in the strategy. And the second one, and, and you've seen it uh, today with Paul as well, is that we want to provide the futsal competition providers and the futsal clubs that are out there with a genuine value proposition uh, to partner with us um, in a, in a like an affiliation model, if you like, um, but something that's, something that's going to be mutually beneficial to them to grow and develop the game together in a unified way. We're not there to compete with the providers. We're there to unify them. We need to lead them. We need to, to, to govern them. And we need to unite them. And that's our role in this. We need to, to make sure um, that what they do um, can really um, create a, a real positive uh, experience for um, I guess, uh, the players, the coaches, the referees, and so forth. And the third thing is what we touched on earlier was really the, the, major, the major one for me is to ensure that we have increased and improved facilities for Futsal um, across Victoria. Uh, we already um, have done some really tremendous work as an organisation to unlock funding from all levels of government for football and for football clubs uh, in particular. Um, I would love to, 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 to see us having the same conversation in that same room where we're talking about football and talk about Futsal as well yeah. um, because basketball and netball are there. They're, they're getting um, – they, they've done it right for, for many years but you know as i'm hearing now and talking to to venue operators and and and, and councils as well is that basketball and netball even siding together they have very uh, similar strategic plans and it it makes sense to 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 um to strategize together and 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 get those get those courts from us that's 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 great to hear i mean it's great that there's there's a strategy i've been involved in futsal as you as you know anthony back in the uk uh, many moons ago but you know for me we talk about player development on this on this show for for best part of three three seasons now futsal really is a great tool for players to become um more technical you know it, it, we talk about you know the sap program within foot uh, uh, Football Victoria, and that's fantastic. I believe that futsal has a, a totally different place, but it's still getting the same results or better results than those SAP training. Now, would you agree? Yeah, uh, of course. And I think it depends on who you ask. I mean, personally, I've seen the benefits of futsal on, even on my own uh, playing days. Um, and, you know, even, even from a refereeing perspective, you know, short, sharp decision making affects my. It, it impacted even the way I, I'd referee outdoor and, and, and my ability to to handle, um, you know, people skills and all sorts of things. So it's not just the player development side of things. It's it, it's for coaches and, and for referees as well. Yeah. Now, Anthony, we did see some footage there of, um, um, I think it's uh, Futsal Oz players. And we also saw some vintage footage of the old James Hardy National Indoor Soccer Competition, which was held, oh, I think back in the 80s. And um, yeah. we've got. I don't think I was born then, don't you? <laughs> I wasn't. Craig was. Craig was born when football was first invented back in the UK. But uh, we've got what one, one uh, viewer says. Now, this is an interesting question. I think he's just uh, left himself tongue tied here. Alex Sivkarovsky says, What is the plan for a national Victorian futsal league? Um, Alex has got a good point, though. Um, as far as like an elite competition, and once upon a time, Victoria was very, very strong um, in, in a national uh, league as per se. Uh, is there talk of having like a statewide competition that is the elite futsal league, you know, for Victoria that might have some of the best of the best players from the various associations playing? And how do you go about that? Because it does seem to be so fractured at the moment. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, uh, Tonchi and Craig. At the end of the day, we'd, we'd all love to see a, 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 a state-based um, Premier League or F League where yeah. you're having um, the best futsal players across Victoria from all regions, not just Metro Melbourne, but from all regions, playing week in, week out. And whether that's something we can do now or six months or a year from now, it's something we need to work together on. It's no, it's no good us as we can show all the leadership we want as an organisation. But for me personally, I'd love to see us 
um, build something together with the community that we all can embrace and, and it's something that's going to be sustainable for the long term. Um, from a national perspective, we really should be looking at having a national futsal league first and foremost. As a national futsal league, all the countries, um, that the, the, all the major players out there have national futsal leagues w which they participate in. And then that really um, sets up the pathway for um, players who want to choose futsal as an option to play from the grassroots all the way through to the elite game, elite side. And that's what we set up as an organisation um, to do. And we, we are working through that at the moment. So my, my first priority is to make sure that we've got some information sessions that we're rolling out from next week as well with the community. Um, obviously, we've had a lot of consultation already, but I think um, now we're starting to see, um, since our announcement, a lot of the uh, providers and the futsal clubs sort of coming together. We, we've reinvigorated a lot of the dialogue already, um, and we're starting to discuss and, and see what potential uh, opportunities are out there in the short term, but also in the long term, again, building something that's sustainable. State league, the State League, for me, is a no-brainer. It's yep. just how we do it because I think, um, as we've learned with the MPL, and I've been at the Federation now for 13 or so years, um, we've seen with the MPL in recent years how it became a centralised brand, and we now see a consistent look and professional feel across all the states in Australia. And for me, that was really uh, someone who was heading commercial as well, is that that brings a lot of um, that brings a halo effect for that particular uh, product. So, you know, we 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 had in we had in recent times or a few years back, we had what what was the F League, um, which was a sort of a national, um, uh, a makeshift national futsal league competition, if you like. It was based on sort of rounds and hubs from you know held in Victoria and Sydney and Canberra. Um, how do we get to that stage where we're playing? We're seeing a national uh, futsal league. In the future and then every uh, state has its own f league similar to what mpl does so mpl at the moment yeah. is mpl victoria mpl in queensland mpl in in new south wales so how can we do the same from an f league perspective where we have state-based f leagues in every state and then maybe the, maybe the winners in each of the age groups or from an open men and open women division where you'd also then um, perhaps have the Futsaroos and the equivalent Australian women's team that are playing yeah. at FIFA Futsal World Cups. You set up the whole pathway from start mm -hmm. to finish. And then, you know, when you're, when you're a 12-year-old and you're a 14-year-old and you're a 16-year-old boy or girl, you, 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 you know, you're inspired to, to go down that pathway and, and, and I guess choose, you need to also choose between football yeah, yeah. and futsal as well because, you know, going back to one of your questions, Tonchi, it's not just... Um, what's out there from a futsal perspective is that you've got football as well so uh, you know we're we're competing really for players who are also you know choosing you know having to choose between mpl or futsal and saturday and sunday and not just sport but you know entertainment and all the things that are out there these days other than sport um so it you know we've really got some 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 um, key decisions to make not just from a state perspective but nationally and how futsal fits into um, talent to play a development and also the grassroots as well. I know. Yeah, sorry, 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 time to call me. Go on. I was going to say, I know in a lot of um, South American and, and European countries where they have fully professional futsal leagues, the players that play in those futsal comps actually don't play football. So it's it's, it's seen right. as two completely different sports, which it is. Yes, and yeah. I guess that brings me to another question that one of our viewers, Chris Briffer, says Would it be better to link futsal teams with clubs? In your opinion, Anthony, is. is that probably, I know there are some clubs, I think Northcote City is one that has a, a designated futsal arm and then obviously it's got its outdoor arm. Is that something you'd love to see in Victoria, the rise of so-called super clubs, clubs that have, on the one hand, football operations, but also on the other hand, they've got futsal operations? Yeah, and look, I, I, I'd love to see football clubs get involved uh, in futsal on a number of levels and, you know, particularly going uh, from a, play development perspective but you know i'm not the technical director i'm not the the one who who sort of rolls out the national curriculum this is a personal opinion um but also you know in terms of getting involved with you know teams out even uh, during their season for football for them to play in futsal competitions again just because of those attributes that it brings to the outdoor game mm. what we're seeing though is we're seeing in in well, from from what i from what i've seen with the consultation process and 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 speaking to to many, not just in Victoria, but there's a real big 
um, futsal club culture now that have, that has been born out of the um, players who have who have played for you know in social leagues such as Sunbury City Futsal or whether it's you know in Caroline Springs or whether it's in Shelburne they've played in their local leagues and not all of a sudden wanted to take it a bit more seriously because they've yep. seen some some providers be be a bit more professional they've seen the opportunities from say an F League or you know at one time we had some some clubs. Uh, qualify. Uh, we had we had a Victorian club called Vic Vipers qualify and play in the Asian, uh, the AFC Futsal Championships. So, you know, during that time there was a real you know uh, culture of creating futsal clubs and 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 uh, training and playing week in week out. So we're starting to see that. So it's going to be interesting to see the dynamic between um, futsal clubs who who want to play futsal all year round and football clubs who might only want to get involved in futsal. Um, in, the off so in the off season, and that's the yeah. thing is, you know, we're trying to build something that's sustainable and something that's going to be consistent week in week out. Because we've also got, again, not just players, but you've got referees and you've got venues to think about, you've got coaches to think about, and there's, you know, qualifications and education and development for them as well that that they that they need um, ongoing game time. We've actually just stole my thunder because one of my my next question <laughs> was going to be for for you is. Um, could it potentially, if we were trying to involve the clubs, could it be an off-season program for certainly the younger age groups? But you've just answered that one. Next question is, uh, how many current teams, futsal teams, do we have in Victoria that play in the in the leagues? So, we, so we've got about 40,000 players. Teams is a bit harder to sort of, you know, but if you think that, you know, a team might have seven players, any any social night, even six sometimes, if they're mm. if they're uh, uh, pull up pull up a bit sore to, to play tonight. But um, there's about forty thousand players that play all year round yeah, for indoor soccer. So you just think about how many teams and how many um, you know people that are out there, you know, going for a kick about from you know even from social just to go for a kick about with mates tonight uh, after work or you know they were all impacted. The last nine months, a lot of those futsal operators and venues didn't see any of their players for yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. And it's know, a shame that's because quite it's a scary uh, thought to, to see that potentially they might not return. You know? Yeah, well, you're involved in the leisure centre down in uh, down in Geelong, there, Tonch, um, and and you know, uh, certainly from a north north Geelong perspective, we train oh. it through the winter period, and that's been that's been locked up for for best part of a year, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of that, and and, and as Anthony knows, I was, um, worked at um, Football Victoria at one stage, and um, a big shout out to my ex colleague down there who's heavily involved with the futsal, Fadi Kiprin. Um, I never actually imagined or 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 or, or realize just how big futsal is in a place like Geelong and I know in Ballarat it's just as big Bendigo the west of Melbourne um, until I actually saw it for myself and then I actually had my my kid enter a team um, at under nine level and we were playing there and it's it's just so big from a social perspective and I think um, one of the things that we'll always kind of think is now the next step that the pathways like actually having players that are at representative level and what you're not. And I know there was a team called Geelong United last year that took part. Um, that was coached by ex Coraya coach Ante Didlitzer, and they swept every everything in, at a country meet. So the potential, Anthony, not just Geelong, obviously, but I'm talking there from personal experience, but all around the state is the potential is immense. But also and as a spectator sport, Tonch. As you know, a spectator you, you, sport. You know, as a spectator sport, it's fantastic because it's really quick. There's lots of goals. There's You don't get one and two nil wins. You get you know, some big results in there. And you get the you get an opportunity to see some great football talent on a on a, on a, on a, on a regular basis, you know, because the control of some of these, you watch some of these Brazilians, you go onto any YouTube clip and, and watch some of these Brazilians playing football. You look at Neymar and your Messi's and, and oh, those yeah. type of guys. They were brought up on... On, on 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 futsal, so yeah, yeah. it's 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 um, uh, Ronaldo. It's no coincidence that the best players in the world have all started their careers at very early age yep. playing futsal. Yeah. So Anthony, I guess to summarise everything, it is there's a lot of potential. Um, it's a massive job. It really, really is when you think about it. Um, and you've, you've mentioned the, the complexities of it, but at the same time, it must be it must be absolutely. Awesome, exciting, must be an exciting era that that, that is going to uh, um, come before us as far as futsal in this state is concerned. It's very exciting, and particularly now that the uh, Football Australia have included futsal in the 11 principles document, which is a, a document which is going to set up the future, you know, 15 years from now for, for football in Australia. 
So I know it's one of their big priorities and, uh, you know, they want to set up a national agenda for futsal and beach soccer as well. Beach soccer is another um, uh, format of the game that is, is hugely popular overseas. It's got its own World Cup as well. Um, I think we've had a few tries at it um, over the years in, in, in other states I mean, as well here in Australia. Do, do we not do that then in, um, sorry, do it, was there not some football tournament last year in Frankston and Angelon, I think, beach football, wasn't it? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we've, we've done the St Kilda Festival. There's been some, you know, but again, that's another one that needs uh, a bit of support. And, you know, wherever we can get people uh, playing football, futsal, five-a-side, seven-a-side, you name it. I mean, for us, that's what we're about with Football Ways. So I think it's important that, you know, how we prioritise moving forward, um, into, even in terms of our, our resources and everything else. So it's going to be interesting. Um, but again, I'm, I'm really interested, especially how we can align with the other states and how we can all work together um, to, to, to be as consistent as possible, not just in Victoria. And if we can inspire the other states to do the same uh, with the F League uh, and, and everything we're trying to do here, you know, we're trying to, to uh, we're going to be announcing, you know, our four referees courses that we're going to be doing soon, our four coaching courses for futsal again. That, they haven't been done in, you know, I think the last yeah. coaching course we did was 2016. Yeah. And already we've got a backlog of, of referees and coaches who are out there, um, unfortunately unqualified and not accredited, not a member. So we need to give them a sense of belonging, need to develop them, support them, mentor them. Uh, and there's a lot of things we need to do. But, you know, uh, we're up for the challenge uh, because the, the outcomes are going to be great. Fantastic. Vladimir Zetlovich, you've just heard it there. There's a referees course right up your street, mate. So uh, get yourself <laughs> get yourself booked on it, mate. And I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll see you on the big screens very uh, very shortly but look Anthony we'll wrap it up there mate we wish you all the very best with it it's uh, as you said it's a big task it's a big operation for you to uh, to do we're glad that somebody's uh, on board and, and running it uh, we'd love to get you back on the show um, throughout the year and uh, and keep a keep an eye on what you're doing and um, yeah any help you need from us in, in promoting it please let us know and we'll, we'll do what we can thank you hope, hope to see you at the state football championships in in April as well Perfect. We may even come down and do a, um, a live broadcast, Hans. What do you reckon? Might be an idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Fantastic, Anthony. Thank you very much for your time on this uh, balmy Friday evening. Um, we'll let you get back to your family and have a great, great weekend. See you guys. Thanks, Anthony. All the best. Bye.